in this short video, we will demonstrate how to engineer a distributed password protection 7SS85 sensor unit with Dixie 5. We will do this by the example of a double bus bar with two feeders and a coupler with two CDs. The communication topology will be HSR. And we will use the integrated grid master clock, a functionality which is available since the firmware version 9.20. My name is Rainer Koblasch, and I am the product lifecycle manager for all Siemens Low Impedance Passport Protection devices. I will do this with my new colleague, Nina Hühn. Nina, it's up to you. Thank you, Rainer. Hello and welcome also from my side. My name is Nina Hühn and I'm the promoter for differential protection. As Rainer already explained, we want to demonstrate the configuration of a 7SS85 distributed bus bar protection with the help of a simple example. And this example looks like this. So we have a double bus bar, two base, one coupler with two CTs, three merging units, and one central unit, the SS85, where the grandmaster clock is integrated and running. So let's jump right in. Um, I already prepared a new project in Dixie. Here you can see nearly the same configuration as shown in the slide, but of course the missing parts we want to configure together. So here I already prepared one bay. This is here the typical bay in our case, and this um, serves also as copy master later on. And I already prepared a single line of the coupler bay with the two CTs. I've inserted two device, uh, three devices, so the two merging units are already configured, and the 7SS85 is also already created in this project. So in the next step, we want to complete the configuration of the first merging unit of the first bay. Then we want to copy the first bay to create the second bay. Then we take a look at all the configuration settings and when all is finished, we do the process bus mapping and the communication mapping to finish, to finalize the configuration. Okay. So I start as told with the merging unit base 01. And here we start with the communication settings. So in this case, I go to hardware and protocols. In this device, the port E is the one with the BD module that is mandatory for the process bus communication. With a double click on the module, I can open the settings for the network configuration. And here under the point protocols and communication, there are the IEC 61850 settings. And the protocol we want to use is the 9-2 merging unit 7SS85CU protocol. So, so I, it's important to say that this 9-2 merging unit 7SS85 CU protocol is really fully compliant to IC 6159-2. It has only some extensions, uh, both for binary signals and also some extension for easier engineering together with the 7SS85 CU. But we will later see, uh, we will create really fully compliant IC 6159-2 uh, somewhat measured uh, value streams. Point. I selected this protocol by just activating this checkbox. This always needs a small moment. And the Wait. background Dixie 5 is doing a lot of things for us. Okay, now the checkbox is activated and the configuration is finished then we check what else uh, must be done here on the module side um, as we saw in the example we want to use for the sampled value synchronization the redundancy protocol hsr and the time syn synchronization for the sampled value synchronization is ieee 1588 so of course we also have to activate here this time sync protocol 15 FD8 
88 also by activating this checkbox. Important to, to really to understand that here by clicking this IEEE 1588, we do not activate the date and time stamp synchronization via IEEE 1588, but we only activating the sampled measured value synchronization via IEEE 1588. So this is sometimes mixed. And we also check the settings for this. Um, now we are in the merging unit. The grandmaster clock is running in the central unit. So the, the merging unit is here only a slave in this case. So here this clock type setting is the correct, correct one for the merging unit. So I just leave it like that. Now we do the same configuration for the 7SS85 concerning the network uh, the communication settings. So here I go also to hardware and protocols. In this case, the module BD module is in port F. Double click to open it. And under protocols and communication, I select here in this case for the central unit, the 9 2 two um, CL seven SS eighty five CU communication protocol. Yes, here I can <laughs> do more or less the same uh, remark as for the 9-2 merging unit functionality. We are now activating a fully compliant 9-2 client functionality in the 7 ss 85 to you. We did only some extensions uh, according to the binary signals and for easier engineering uh, of a communication between Bay units, merging unit and the 7 ss 85 CU. But it's fully compliant to IEC 6250. Okay, so then I go to network and activate also the IEEE 1588. And go to the IEEE 1588 settings. And now we are in the central unit. So here the grandmaster clock should run. That means we are not in slave only mode. So I deactivate this checkbox and use the OC Grandmaster capable function. So now Nina has activated, as already said, the indicated Grandmaster uh, clock in the 7SS85. On principle, uh, the Grad master clock can be activated in each device uh, in the HSR ring, in the HSR ring. Uh, but uh, there's a speciality uh, to enable it in the 7SS85 because the 7SS85 as a sender unit for the distributed bus for protection is the only device where this functionality is free of charge. Whereas in the merging unit, in the bay units, uh, you have to pay around about 100 function points for this functionality. So I give you the good advice to activate it in the 7SS85 instead of the merging units. A good hint. And now I almost forget one point uh, because we have also made the settings for the redundancy protocol. This is a standardly set to line mode and here we want to use the HSR mode. Of course, I have to do the same for the merging unit once again. So I change the protocols collection, confirm it with yes. Okay, and now we jump back to the merging unit and do the same. These are all the necessary settings for the communication protocols. So now we want to check the functions itself in the Bay unit. So if we take a look once again in the single line configuration, we see here for Bay 1, we have two disconnectors connected to the both bus bars, one circuit breaker and one current transformer. So of course we have to make sure that all these elements shown here and physically there are also um, configured in the software. So I open the library.
Here we now in the merging unit device. I opened a folder for the merging unit and now I want to insert the two disconnectors. Disconnectors are switching devices, so I open this folder for switching the device and then I will insert here this function disconnector status only. This is uh, sufficient for our setup. So we are track and drop on the settings of the merging unit. We just can insert this from the library. So make this twice. So we can see the circuit breakers already available and the measuring point for the CT is already available. We can check this once. Short. So these routings are already done by default. So we have all the necessary elements here. And we are now finished for um, inserting the elements. But of course, maybe um, you want to insert some functionality from the library. This is, of course, also possible. For example, if we want to have the breaker failure protection or the end fault protection, can insert this to the function group circuit breaker. So I once again go to the library, the merging unit and here to the circuit breaker. And now I go here to the bus bar function extensions and then I see here the 15 EF, this is the end fault protection function. Also via drag and drop, I can insert this functionality to the circuit breaker. And uh, Nina, don't forget mm -hmm. also the circuit breaker failure protection. Yes. So we, we should demonstrate here uh, all typically necessary um, backup uh, protection functionality, which is coming for uh, distributed bus protection for bus protection. So that's the inherent circuit breaker failure protection yeah. and also the, the, ex, the advanced circuit breaker failure protection. We should also demonstrate where to mm -hmm. find. Okay. So at the end, uh, you should add to your template. I think this first bay and bay unit is more or less a template uh, to copy further all protection functionaries uh, you uh, need for your protection scheme. Then we can really avoid this double work by just copying this master bay. Okay, yes. and uh, and all and also you said uh, you should route as much as possible all binary inputs, all binary outputs. You should adapt your settings. Uh, so uh, in the copy of uh, of of the next space, uh, you will save a lot of time. Yep. So okay. go on, Nina. <laughs> the additional circuit breaker function can be found here, also in the function group circuit breaker in the folder circuit breaker failure protection. So now we have those three functions that we mentioned already inserted. And maybe there's also one other interesting thing um, that is the bay out of service functionality. Which is and called which is called now measuring point out of service. Uh, but uh, <laughs> thanks that you uh, named it bay out of service because uh, most of the people know them still from the 7S, uh, 7SS52 and in the 7SS52 we called it bay out of service. But mm, as yes. we now in our bay units have the possibility not only to cover the current of only one bay of only one current transformer, now we are able in Subotec 5 to cover up to eight bays. Uh, within one bay unit and so we thought it would be a good idea to rename it from bay out of service really to measuring point out of service. This function can be found also in the merging unit under measuring points and here in current three phase also for this special bus bar protection function and here it is called the yeah, measuring point out of service and this must be track and drop to the measuring point that we want to have this functionality. This additional function is necessary when you want to start and stop the bay out of service, the measuring point out of service from the bay unit, from the merging unit. Uh, in the central unit, this functionality will automatically be uh, possible. We will see it later. 
Mm -hmm. And as Rainer mentioned, um, yes, uh, we now want to make some routings. At least the most important one, the routings for the disconnectors. The routing for the circuit breakers here per default already done. So we just add the routing for the two disconnectors that we inserted. So I just put the position from the disconnector one to the binary inputs three and four. The open high and the close high command. And for the second disconnector, I use um, input five and six. Okay. So these are the most important changes for the merging unit. Now I will come to the yeah also most important changes for the central unit. Uh, performed. And, of course, mm -hmm. uh, you should not forget uh, also to adapt the settings of the current thresholds for the circuit breaker failure protection to route the start signal of the circuit breaker failure protection and also on. But I think it's fine for today. I think we want to demonstrate really the special things for distributed bus bar protection. So for the central unit, we only have to check um, in our case in this minimum variant, I would say, um, that there are enough bus zones available in the device. So in our case, we have two buses and therefore we need two bus zones. So, and for now there are already one um, bus zone available, so we have to add a second one. Therefore I go to the library once again, but now to the um, Higher. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Time's hard to find. So now to the 7SS85 and to the function group busbar and to busbar protection function extensions. And here can be found the second bus zones. So I drag and drop this to the busbar protection. And these are all the settings changes we want to do for now. So as a next step, I want to make the connections in the single line diagram. So that we can see everything. Change the scale. OK. And um, for the coupler bay, I did already the same things that we did together for the base zero one. So here in this case, I can do the routings directly. So I start with the circuit breaker. Here we connect the measuring point of the circuit breaker to our measuring point in the bay one. Connect the actual position of the circuit breaker to this status symbol of the circuit breaker. and I connect the two disconnectors to the disconnector elements. Okay. Then I do the same for the coupler bay. Here you have to choose one of the two measuring points for your circuit breaker. Then connect the circuit breaker status. Of course, also connect the two disconnectors in this case. And this is also all for the coupler bay. And for the central units, we have to connect the two bus zones to the two buses. Okay, now we really have finished our master bay, our copy bay. And yeah, that's what we want to do right now. We want to copy the first bay and then we can see what really Dixie is here capable of. It really saves us a lot of time. So I just, by using this uh, rectangle function, I just select everything, right mouse click and copy. Click here somewhere else and paste it again. And then he's copying the single line diagram and the device as well. 
with all the setting changes that we've already made. Was this with, needs small with moment? All, with already the activated uh, protocols, which uh, took a lot of time when we activated it, so it really saves also a lot of time. Oh, once again, <laughs> you succeeded in copy the bus bus. I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have to delete it and arrange it a little bit. Everything looks a little bit nicer. And we do the connections to the bus bar. Use a name of in the same way as the first bay. And then we can take a small look on the newly created device. So here it ma makes also sense to rename it Bay 02. And here also one small hint. Um, it makes sense to go to the device information and check the IEC 61850 name. Because um, when we do the when we see the routing later on in the system configurator. You can see that it is helpful to have here meaningful names that you can check the routings of the signals. So for the second bay, I call it merging unit underline bay two. I already did the naming for the devices that are already in this project. Did you already change the name of the 7SS85 also, the IEC name? Yes, but okay. I can check again. It's they called it seven uh, SS eighty five. So typically, I would recommend to use nearly the same name, like the name. Uh, but unfortunately, for the IC name, uh, the first uh, you can't use a ticket as the first. Uh, how to say uh, on the first place, first place of the name. <laughs> it's not allowed to start with a ticket. Then. All the settings are made, so now we come to the most yeah, interesting point maybe for this small little video. We want to do the process bus routings and connections. So as a first step, I go to the once again to the single line diagram. And now we want to make the CU BU assignment. Therefore, I change here the view from all devices to the 7S85. And then he's automatically telling me that the CUBU assignment must be updated. So that's what we want to do right now. So I confirm with yes. Yeah, <laughs> when the update CUBU assignment is done, it's really a lot of engineering work done automatically. For each circuit breaker, disconnector, current transformer routed in the single line editor, as Nina has done, uh, to an element in the bay unit, uh, this feature will create automatically uh, proxy elements in the 7SS85 sensor unit. We will create a proxy for each bay. And within this bay, we will create proxies for each disconnector. We will create proxies for the position of the disconnectors. We will create proxies of the circuit breaker, the position of the circuit breaker, and also the most important signals about this uh, protection functionalities here uh, for the circuit breaker failure protection and the endfold protection, a trip, uh, a signal for the retrip, a signal for the trip T2 and so on. And very important, uh, it will automatically be created a communication telegram between the elements in the bay unit and the associated elements in the center unit. And all this will be done within several minutes and saves, saves really hours of fault prune manually work. So now we are already finished. And mm -hmm. Nina is already arranging now the measurement box. Uh, and how you will arrange this measurement box is here in the single line editor. You will see it later when you open the online monitoring uh, of the bus bar protection. So it's a good idea to arrange this here in a good way and will save a lot of time during commissioning. 
So it's up to you, Nina. <laughs> OK, so I think this is nice enough for our case. So as a next step, we need to create an IEC 61850 station and really want to yeah, do all the communication connections, the process bus connections that we that fits here to the uh, project and to the configuration we made. So I go to the folder IEC 61850 station. There's at the moment no station available, so I add a new station by double click. And with double click, I open the newly created station. And now we see the four devices that we created. And with this double arrow, I can assign all these four devices to the IC station that we created. And now we export the settings to the IEC 61 configurator, system configurator. And therefore I use this um, export button. Needs once again a little bit of time. Depending also on the size of your substation and the number of devices you have created. Okay, now he needs a folder where we save this station. And yeah, now he's really exporting all the information to the system configurator. So the system configurator opens automatically. Okay, now we see here this orange warning. This is there because we can see here on the network and the default subnet that all the devices in this subnet, all our four devices have at the moment the same IP addresses. This of course is not, yeah, not so. Nice, it's not a problem for um, our configuration, but yeah, just to remove here this warning, I um, do a right mouse click on the default subnet and use the option automatic addressing. Overwrite the existing IP addresses and then they have individual IP addresses. As Nina said, this is not really necessary for the functionality of the, to transmit the standard measured values because uh, for this uh, purpose, uh, we will create automatically MAC addresses. These IP addresses will only be necessary to con uh, to have access via Dixie 5 via network to the different devices, but it's not necessary for the distributed password protection. But we want to get rid of any inconsistency <laughs> in the system configurator, so it's absolutely fine. Okay, and then we go to the sampled values. And here, if I right mouse click on the IEC station, there's the option sample measured values mapping through topology. And this is the option I select now. Now he automatically connects the sample measure values from the base to the central unit according to the single line and to the configuration we made in Dixie. So maybe uh, just to open one, yes, mm -hmm. to demonstrate and to show it. And here you can, we can also see uh, where the IEC name we have, uh, we have changed. Uh, you will see here, so this merging unit MU Bay 01 is exactly the IEC name uh, we have given to the device. Uh, it's the same like here in the destination, the 7SS85, which is also the IEC name, which is uh, displayed here in the IEC configurator. And that's already all we have to make here. So I save the changes and close the system configurator. And now as yeah, nearly the last step, I re-import the changes from the system configurator to Dixie. There's also this import button. Mm. 
he just warns me that maybe some um, yeah, current voltage transformer settings may have changed. This is okay for us in this case. So hopefully we worked fine and the inconsistency will be uh, will be deleted. <laughs> Drum roll. <laughs> but I'm quite sure. It looks good. So maybe let's have a look what happens. I go to the information routing of the central unit. And now we can see here under the power system that we now have the proxy elements of the measuring points of the bay units here, of all three. And maybe maybe show also the uh, signal for the bay out of service. Mm -hmm. Just open one of those. And oh, ah, here it is. This down there and here are the yeah, signals messages for the measuring point out of service functionality and okay. hmm? yeah exactly i go to the base and here we will see also the uh, bay out of measuring point of service directly at from the sensor unit i think it's below general mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yes, exactly. Here yeah, and here, see, so that's automatically from the uh, to start the bay out of service, the measuring point out of service from the sender unit, uh, you will have it automatically under the general of the bay proxy in the sender unit. And yeah, we see for all the functions we've created and for all the three elements, there are now here these proxy elements with the signals um, visible in the information routing. So maybe yeah, just uh, may, just maybe open. open the circuit breaker will be mm -hmm. interesting with the circuit breaker failure protection and the end fault protection. So here, for example, the um, breaker failure protection and T1, T1, and uh, T2 trip, for example. So these signals are now automatically created and available in the central unit. Okay. Maybe we okay. have also look at the merging unit and there I go to the merging unit routing and now we see here that the stream type the stream is now connected of the measuring point here in this case the stream type maybe we can for short look on the stream type settings And, and here we can say what I have said. Uh, really, is this uh, mer 9 2 merging unit functionality for 7SS85 uh, CU uh, is really using fully IEC 650 compliant uh, process bus streams. And, uh, in this process bus stream, we are using the fixed sampling rate of 4000 Hz and 1 ASTU. This can't be changed. So that's a best sampled measured value stream for distributed bus bar protection, but this stream can be uh, used without any problems by uh, different clients if necessary. So then you have to do it manually in the IC configurator, but it's without problems possible also to use this stream for other applications in other devices. Okay. So, so now maybe, we have... Maybe one uh, we forgot maybe to show in the power system of the 7SS85, the routing uh, we mm -hmm. have done to to remove the inconsistency. I think that will be from my point of view the last thing we should maybe mm -hmm. show to. So that is. Um, are now available these elements or where do we want to oh sorry not in the power system in the measuring points routing ah. <laughs> i give you the wrong hint Yeah, so here we see the three proxies of the of our measuring points which have been created. And you see here that the, all these measuring points come via the process bus client. 
And uh, if we go now to the properties, we will see also where they exactly came from. Yeah. So more or less the same we have seen in the IEC configurator. Okay. Yeah, then now we are finished with the configuration. Now you just have to load it to the device and can, can start testing. Um, we hope this video was interesting for you and helpful. And thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Nina, for the nice demonstration. I also have to uh, thank for your attention. And uh, Nina and me, we hope that this video will help you uh, to configure your first distributed password protection. Goodbye. Goodbye.